This video is going to help you understand some basic vector operations, such as multiplying a vector by a scalar, adding or subtracting vectors, and just a couple other um, types of vector operations. We're not going to go too deep into those, but just to make you aware of some other things that you can do with vectors. And all of these uh, operations are being done graphically which means that we're doing them using a drawing process. Graphical means drawing. So all of these uh, operations that we're doing, we're not really calculating numbers or I mean, nothing to put in your calculator. It's all drawing vectors and kind of understanding the conceptual relationships uh, behind these operations. So the first one I want to talk about is called multiplying by a scalar. In the last video, we talked about what a scalar is. A scalar is just a number. So when you multiply a vector by a scalar, it has the effect of setting the scale. It can change the length of your vector. It can also change the direction of your vector if that scalar is a negative scalar. What it does is it can reverse the direction of your vector. So a scalar will, could change the size of your vector. The special case is just the scalar, the number one. If you multiply your vector by the number one, you're just going to get your vector back. Um, but if you multiply it by the number two, that has the effect of doubling the size of your vector. So a scalar will change the length of the vector. It could change the direction, and it only can do one thing to the direction. If your scalar is negative, it flips your vector 180 degrees. So let's do an example here. I have a vector A. It's kind of pointing up and to the right with that length right there. Let's try to sketch the effect of multiplying A by negative one quarter. So let's do this one over here. The effect here, so that negative one quarter, that's our scalar. It's going to flip the direction of vector A because I see a negative sign. It's also going to scale vector A and so it's saying it's one quarter or 25% of vector A. It's going to shrink vector A down by four. So if vector A is pointing up and to the right, 180 degrees from that is pointing down and to the left. And we want to shrink it by a quarter. So I'm going to try to divide vector A up into quarters just to kind of see, see the scale. And so I would say that negative one quarter A looks something like this. Now let's think about 2A. The scalar is 2. And so what that's saying is double the size of A. It's positive, so it's not changing the direction at all. Our new answer should be twice the size of A. All right, so check your work. See if you got that understanding of multiplying a vector by a scalar. The next type of vector operation I want to talk about is vector addition. You only can add vectors together if they have the same physical quantity and they have the same unit. So if they are describing the same physical quantity and they have the same units, then you can add those two vectors together. And these are the steps of vector addition. First, you have to decide what are we adding together. So assemble your vectors. Draw all the vectors that you are adding together. Then you're going to translate those vectors. Remember, you're allowed to pick up a vector and move it as long as you don't rotate it or change its length. Translate all of your vectors you're adding together so that they are arranged tip to tail. This means that literally the tip of the next vector, or sorry, the tip of the last vector is right at the tail of the next vector. Then you're going to draw a new vector that connects the tail of the very first vector all the way to the, to the tip of the very last vector. And that new vector that you just drew, that's your answer. That's something called the resultant. All right, so here's an example. I have three vectors, A, B, and C. I'm going to add them together and get vector D. So there's three vectors, A, B, and C. Those are the things I'm going to add together. So I want to arrange them tip to tail. So here's vector A, I translated it, I just moved it over here. Next, I am going to uh, translate vector B so that its tail starts at the tip of vector A. Then I'm gonna take my next one, vector C, I'm gonna translate it. 
so that the tail of vector C is right at the tip of vector B. Those are my three things that I'm adding together. So that's my sum. Now I'm going to draw this new vector, the resultant, which we have named D in this, this particular example problem. D will start at the tail of the very first vector that we drew. So that's vector, vector A's tail. And D will end at the tip of our very last vector that we added up together. So vector D should look something like this. Notice that vector D is not tip to tail with all the other vectors because vector D is not being added with all of these vectors. Vector D is the resultant. All right, and one more property of vector addition that is true, uh, that's familiar to you, is that addition is commutative. It doesn't matter the order of the things that you're adding. You can do it in any order you want. So if we did this example again, but I start off with vector B in this case, and I add that to vector A, and then I add that to vector C, now I'm going to draw my resultant. There's vector D. It's, it has that length and it points in that direction. That's the exact same vector I drew in my first example. So vector D is the same regardless of the order of the vectors of how I added them. So you can do this again, a few more examples. Prove to yourself that the order of adding the vectors doesn't matter. Very closely related to addition is subtraction. So vector subtraction, it's honestly, it's really the same thing as addition if you just think of subtraction as adding a negative. So if I asked you for A minus B, that's really the same thing as saying A plus negative B. So all you gotta do now is find negative B. And you guys know from multiplying by a scalar that negative B, it just points in exactly the opposite direction as B. So if that's B, negative B points exactly opposite or 180 degrees away from vector B. So that's all you got to do is change subtraction into addition and then just follow the steps of vector addition. So that's my advice to you is master vector addition and then just turn anything you can into vector addition. So let's do an example here. Let's say that these are my vectors A and B and I want to find A minus B. So A minus B that's the same as A plus negative B. So let's get those vectors together first. I'm gonna translate A, <clears throat> there's vector A. And now I need to find vector negative B. So I've labeled that one negative B. Make sure that you label it correctly. That's negative B, it's not B anymore, it's negative B. And now I wanna add those two vectors together. So we're gonna follow the steps of vector addition. I'm gonna translate these vectors so that they are tip to tail. And the order doesn't matter. So now I've translated them again so that A is tip to tail with negative B. And now I am going to find the resultant. I draw this new vector from the tail of my first one out to the tip of my last one. And that is our resultant vector. All right, so you are now masters of multiplying by a scalar, vector addition, and vector subtraction. Uh, we can do this example problem together. We're going to put all of these three things together. So I have, we're going to figure out vector m. m is defined as 3 times vector a minus 1 half times vector b. So let's follow our steps. It's probably a good idea to pause this video and give yourself a chance to work this one out. I am using graph paper to do this because like I said, graphic um, operations require drawing and you want to try your best to keep your vectors drawn exactly as they were. So I, I added some graph paper here to help me keep the scales and the directions right. So I would pause the video, give this one a try on your own, and then check your answers with me in just a minute. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find 3 times A and then um, negative 1 half B. So I'm going to change vector subtraction into addition. So this is 3A plus negative one half B. So now I'm going to find 3A. So vector A points down um, like two units and to the left three units. And so three times A is going to point down six units. Six and it should point over nine units.
So that is three times A. And now negative one half B. So I'm gonna cut B in half and I'm gonna reverse the direction. Okay, so now I have found the two vectors that I wanna to add together. I need to translate them so that they are tip to tail. So I'm gonna redraw them over here, tip to tail. Okay, my two vectors I want to add together are now placed tip to tail. I'm going to draw my resultant vector. I'm going to change the color to really emphasize that this vector should not be tip to tail with them. It is not being added. It is the answer. So the resultant starts at the beginning of my train of vectors that are tip to tail, and it points to the end of that vector. So this is vector M. This is the result of the sum of 3a plus negative one half b. So check your work, see if your vector m looks the same as mine does, it has the same length and does it have the same direction. The last couple things I wanna talk about are just some other types of vector operations. We're not gonna, we're gonna really examine these later on. I just wanna let you know that these things exist. We already talked about multiplying by a scalar, but there are other types of vector multiplication as well. One of them is called the dot product, the other one is called the cross product. So you would never say that I'm multiplying two vectors together. What you would say is that I am dotting two vectors or I am crossing two vectors. And these are two very different operations. So the dot product, it's something that's sim it's also known as like the projection operator. What I want you to remember here is that the dot product takes two vectors and it returns a scalar. So if you can remember that, that the dot product takes two vectors, you dot them with each other, and what you get in the end is a scalar. Whereas the cross product, you will cross two vectors, and what you get out of that operation is a new vector. So the cross product relate, or sorry, results in a vector. So that's one of the main differences that you want to remember about the cross product versus the dot product. Make sure you're very careful and when you're referring to the dot product, you write the little dot. And when you're talking about a cross product, you write that X, that cross, that really shows the difference between these two operations. Don't confuse them. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is dividing by a vector. Let's say you have this equation here that says vector F equals M, which is a scalar, times vector A. If I asked you to solve for M right now, you might have the instinct to try to divide by vector A, just bring that vector over to the other side of the equation and we're done, right? Vector F is just divided by vector A, that gives us scalar M. And what I wanna tell you right now is that no, you are not allowed to divide by a vector. That operation does not exist, it cannot be done. So we will go over other ways of solving that equation, you just can't. There is no such thing as vector division. Please don't ever write anything that implies dividing by a vector. Vectors should never be in the denominator of a fraction. All right, so those are all the basic vector operations done graphically. And we'll go on to the next concepts of dealing with vectors in other ways other than graphical methods in, the, in another video.